Wayfinder is a brand new instanced hub based MMO light that's recently came to Steam Early Access. In this game you run randomly generated dungeons to obtain loot, take on bosses either solo or in 3 player groups, complete quests, hunt resources in the open world, hunt collectibles and upgrade your Wayfinder. Wayfinder basically works similar to Warframe in that each Wayfinder you unlock has their own specific abilities. Each Wayfinder can equip any weapon, and changing weapons only changes your weapon ability, but not character abilities. Wayfinder will be a free to play game on full release, which will apparently be in around 6 months time, and so far the game has a similar business model to Warframe. Not pay to win, but you can pay to skip the in-game grind of unlocking characters and weapons by spending money. I covered Wayfinder earlier in the year during the closed beta, and I didn't really enjoy the game too much. I found the combat to be average at best, the dungeons to be repetitive, and the sense of progression to be lacking. Today we'll find out if Wayfinder has improved with this early access release, but first, today's sponsor a special collaboration between Goddess of Victory Nikkei and Nier Automata. Jump into Goddess of Victory Nikkei, a thrilling sci-fi RPG shooter where you form a team of gun-wielding anime characters, and now, with their collaboration with Nier Automata, you can play with beloved characters such as 2B, A2 and Pascal. As a fan of both universes, I love how Nikkei and Nier both revolve around post-apocalyptic settings. The collaboration perfectly meshes their fight for humanity through diverse gameplay elements, from puzzles and roguelike challenges to competitive battles. Be prepared for fresh character designs and outstanding visuals. Thanks to advanced animations and the latest in gaming tech, everything feels alive and dynamic. The game is also cross-play, so whether you're on Android, iOS or PC, you can dive right into the action. There should be tons of Nikkei livestreams going on throughout this event, so be on the lookout for Twitch drops. You can receive bonuses like Advanced Recruitment Voucher 23, Recruitment Voucher 10, Limited SR Pascal 3, and Unique Avatar Frame 2. So don't miss out on this epic collaboration. Download Goddess of Victory Nikkei using the link in the description. Download now. Wayfinder. This is a game that I covered a few months ago and I didn't really like it, but it's just released on Steam Early Access, so I'm hoping it's gone through a lot of changes and feels a lot better to play now. Last time I played this game I chose Nis as my starting character. I think we're going to go with Wingrave this time, because he looks cool. No other reason than that. Voice acted intro cutscene. Cool animations on his abilities. I like that. Right click is a block. Movement feels responsive. Let's try my number one ability. Ooh, that feels good. Very impactful. What's my number three ability? Is that just a taunt? Okay. I can dodge roll with control. Oh! I was just randomly jumping like an idiot. Good start. Dying on the tutorial. Got ourselves a boss fight. Number four ability. Okay, that puts down like a giant protective shield. So when it comes to abilities, I've got two attacks. I've got one defensive and one taunt. Let's hope that's enough to keep the combat fun for a long period of time. One of my critiques when I first played this game was there just wasn't enough abilities and my hands were getting bored. And we've arrived at Skylight, a bunch of other players. The game definitely feels a lot more polished since the last time I played it, which is to be expected. Okay, if you dodge roll and then it left click, it actually gives you a different attack. It gives you like a forward stab. So that's kind of cool. That's like a, a new ability that just doesn't appear on your abilities. Okay, so we've got max chest rewards according to the thing at the top. Let's just speed run the rest of the dungeon, destroy the glue manker, bunch of loot. Yeah, I definitely picked the right character, simply because he, he just looks cool by default, doesn't he? I would prefer if he had a giant two-handed sword, though, rather than sword and shield. I think later on you can change your weapon, and I think your weapon determines your abilities, if I remember correctly. I want to make a character that looks like an absolute giga chad, two-handed sword, big and muscly, absolute unit. Yeah, sword like this guy. What is that walk? Bro's walking animation looks like he's just shit himself. Are you alright, mate? He needs to find the toilet as quickly as possible, doesn't he? And now we can take the lift down to the highlands. Okay, is this actually going to be animated? Last time it was just a loading screen. Okay, it's just a loading screen still. What would have been better is if it actually entered like a cutscene slash pseudo loading screen where you see the lift descend and it arrives at the highlands rather than typical black boring loading screen and that's a long loading screen to be fair we're at about 30 seconds now 
If you're going to have an instance game, you don't want to have long ass loading screens. That's, that's going to be something that will put people off. This loading screen is so long. It's at the point where I, I want to take out my phone and like scroll Twitter or something. It, it's that long. Okay, Twitter it is. Let's go. Let's have a scroll, shall we? What's Elon Musk up to today? Disconnected, lovely. Let me guess. 5,000 person queue to get back in. Oh my god, fucking lovely. Last night there was 20,000 people in the queue. And here's the thing, not many people are even playing the game. 13,000 people playing the game 16 minutes ago. Yet there's a queue of 5,800. How are you releasing a multiplayer game but only supporting like 13 to 20,000 people online at once? And the worst thing is, because this game uses easy anti-cheat, I can't even open Black Desert online and grind some mobs whilst I'm waiting for this loading screen. I guess I'll play some Palia and attempt to continue recording in another hour or so. One hour later. Oh great, we've actually, we've made it. The game has quite an interesting uh, stylized aesthetic to it. Last time I covered this game, people were saying that it gave them wild star vibes, which I can definitely see. And into the breach. I'm a little bit paranoid with every loading screen now that I'm gonna get disconnected. I've automatically been grouped with other players. The players I'm in a group with are kind of carrying me. Big giant spider mob here. Silk Mistress. Kill it for the glory. Dead spider. This level does seem a lot more interesting than uh, the levels the last time I played the game. Seems a bit more fun. And onto the final boss. Level four Vanguard. So that's my weapon leveling up. GG. I actually like that the game has this system where you can get up to 200% additional damage just by continuously attacking mobs. It's a simple thing to add, but keeping that 200% damage buff definitely adds something extra to think about during the gameplay. Especially like in boss fights, don't let the 200% buff fall off. Matchmaking was unable to find a server, please try again. Please don't disconnect me. Oh no, it's frozen. You cannot fast travel whilst in combat. Interesting. It's a bit scuffed, isn't it? So I'm, that's it, I'm just frozen and stuck. The game couldn't find a server. Exit to the main menu. Is this gonna like disconnect me? I, I don't see what else I can do. I, I bet the cash shop's working though, isn't it? The rest of the fucking game isn't. The servers aren't. View world map. Maybe I can teleport to the world map from here. No, because the game thinks I'm in combat when I'm not. I'm starting to understand why it's got mostly negative reviews. Okay, let's quit to the main menu. It's gonna put me in a fucking queue again, isn't it? <laughs> Back to watering my plants in Palia. At least this bloody game works. One eternity later. We've once again conquered the queue for the third time today. We go again. Buy weapons. Rifle, two-handed axe, sword and shield, dual daggers. I don't want any of those. I want a great sword. This. This is what I want. How do I get this? So we're going to need to go farm a bunch of stuff. Quite expensive as well. Looks like we need to get grinding for the great sword mats. Enter your apartment in the great hall. Oh, that's interesting. Enter your room. That's cool. So everyone's got their own little instanced housing apartment. Let's see what we've got. Nice. Looking cosy already. Nice addition to the game since the last time I played it. Can you jump off the map? I can't remember. Let's try it. Jumper. It was time to get grinding, but right away I was met with a game-breaking bug that looped me to my death over and over. I managed to get into a dungeon, attempted to kill a treasure goblin. Is he going to bait us off a cliff? Oh, you cheeky goblin! You almost... Did bait me off a cliff. And after clearing the boss, I was welcomed by a loading screen so long that it allowed me to water my crops in Palia. Thanks, Wayfinder. I still didn't get any crafting materials for the greatsword, so I started exploring the open world. I found a big monster that almost sent me to the Shadow Realm, found some budget murlocs on the beach. And after a few hours of going around and gathering every material in sight, I headed back and saw that I was still at zero progress towards crafting my greatsword. I was about to abandon all hope until I realised something. Can I just buy the weapon that I want from the shop and use a greatsword right off the bat? I can. I will do that. Okay, to the cash shop. Here's me playing like an idiot, trying to grind and unlock the weapons. Nah, the smart way is to whip out the card. Congratulations, okay. And that's the sword that I wanted. Buying that weapon off the cash shop has completed a quest. Mate, this sword's so big it's just clipping through the floor. 
kind of excited to actually play the game now and finally use the weapon that I want. Maybe the combat's going to be more fun now. There's like a 12,000 player queue, but there's no one actually in the game. Like, there's hardly any players running around. It's not rammed or anything. The servers for this game are so weird. So, now we've finally got the weapon that I like. Is it fun? That's the question. Oh, it feels way better straight away. So now I've got my Q ability. Let's see what the weapon can do. Oh, big damage. I don't like the sprint animation with this weapon, though. He's, like, holding the greatsword forward like it's a spear. Just seems a bit weird. Okay, the Broodmother. Big damage. Oh, we broke it. Nice. Oh, the greatsword deals, like, massive break damage. I forgot about that. Good to know. Pop the ulti. Heal. Big damage. Oh, another player's popped out. Okay. Another player's just randomly joined halfway through. I appreciate that. It's going to make this experience infinitely better for me. Great sword is the way. Oh, just big AoEs. Oh, it's so fucking fun. The great sword. Compared to the sword and board, so much better. If I didn't realize that you could just buy the weapons that you want to use off the cash shop, probably would have just quit the game. I was bored to tears of the sword and shield gameplay. It was doing nothing for me. This though, much more my playstyle. There it is. GG plus complete bunch of loot. It's a lot of enemies. Big AOEs. Oh yeah. Group them up. Big damage. That's a lot of mobs. I've never seen mobs this dense in the game before. But the mob AI seems so dumb, I can just run past them like this. Brain dead AI. And what are they doing? Come on, lads. Come fight me, for fuck's sake. Come here. Big damage. Sit down. Cleared all of them out. Looks like a hidden passage. I feel like something that has improved since the last time I played this game is the level design. It's way less repetitive and a lot more interesting than it was before. The last time I played the game, the level design was unbelievably repetitive. And the game has crashed. F's in the chat. That's it for my recording tonight. We are not sitting through another two to three hour queue. I'll try again tomorrow. The next morning. I'm going to try and do these dungeons slowly and gather all of the materials. See if it's actually worth it. It seems like it might actually be worth just taking it slowly, doing the puzzles and not rushing through. I hope that's the meta anyway because when I last played the game in testing, the meta was to just rush through the levels as quickly as possible. If the actual meta is to fully clear the dungeons, don't skip anything, then that makes it a lot more fun, in my opinion. I hope that's the case. So far, taking it slow and killing all of the monsters does seem to be worth it. Definitely having more fun taking this approach anyway. Sometimes the levels are really vast with branching paths. Sometimes they're quite short. It's nice having that variation. The randomness of the dungeon is much better since the last time I played the game. I can say that for sure. Dare I say it, I'm starting to have fun. Now, we'll see how long that fun lasts because I'm sure that fun will stop as soon as I disconnect and have to wait in a 5,000 person queue again. I can feel my fun levels like going down as these load screens drag on. They really need to do something about the load screens. Like you do a dungeon, you have a good time and then like you're in the load screen and then you kind of get taken out of the game. I can really feel that. Taken out of the flow state of gameplay. You never really want that to happen. Yeah, this person looks cool. What armor is that? That guy looks so cool. Where the hell do I get that armor? To the cash shop. Maybe he's wearing this? No. I want to know how to get this armor. This guy looks so cool. I can't see an option to buy this armor off the cash shop. Right, so it seems like I need to do some open world farming now to get a resource to craft the next boss gloom trace. So let's just go kill some random mobs, I guess. Oh, we've found it. So it's those crystals. Got it. Let's just do a bit of open world farming. Why not? I haven't really done much open world content in this game. Okay, so now I've got the stuff I need to make this gloom trace. Got it. Um, yeah, we really just cannot find a server. Let's click escape. Can we exit? No, menu tutorial. I've been waiting for about seven minutes. To be fair, I haven't even been playing this game at launch. It's now like five or six days since the game launched and they still haven't fixed the server issues. Well, I guess uh, the game's just broken here, so we're gonna have to jump in the queue again, I guess. One million zillion jillion dillion cotillion times later. 
What upgrades do we have? I got another ability upgrade. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I use this ability all the time. I'm going to respec, then I'm going to take this to level 2 because this increases damage and healing by 15%. So with only one ability point, it wasn't worth taking, but with two, it seems pretty decent now. And now I'm sitting at 895 gear score. So with that, we should be fine to do this next boss. Never fought this boss before. Dude looks like a Chad. Is he invisible, is he? Oh, that must have just been like a bug. <laughs> Bit of an unfair start. Okay, his attack patterns are quite telegraphed so far. Dodge, dodge. Triple attack pattern there. Let's uh, break his shields. I'm gonna dodge out of that. Big damage. Oh. How did I take damage? I was out of the red stuff. Oh, I'm out of potion. Okay, I'll just abandon. I'll try again. Party not found. What do you mean party not found? You try and do something and you're waiting for a five minute fucking loading screen every time and it just, it makes you want to just do something else. Do I really have time to waste sitting waiting for a fucking loading screen? It doesn't matter, even if this game was more fun than it is, which it isn't, the fact that there's so many fucking loading screens just wasting infinite amounts of your time makes the game not worth playing because there's other games that don't have that. So fundamentally, it doesn't matter if this game was better than it is. It doesn't matter what improvements they make to the game because fundamentally, it's a fucking load screen fest. And I hate having my time wasted. And I'm sure a lot of you guys also hate having your time wasted. I haven't played a game with loading screens this long in recent memory. If only the devs could find their way to buying some more servers. If only I could find my way through the load screen. Digital extremes, more like loading screen extremes. Airship syndicate, more like loading screen syndicate. Fuck's sake, this game's making me mad. Why are we still here? Played the game for 16 hours in the past few days, but I swear half of that time has been spent in queue or in loading screens. I took a break for a few hours, calmed down, and decided to try and play the game off camera to see if it's the kind of game you can just chill and enjoy. I joined a group and killed Commander Creed, did some questing in the Highlands, upgraded my gear and unlocked the Bloodworks dungeon, but after about 40 minutes, I just naturally reached the point where I felt like I didn't want to play the game anymore. I wasn't having fun and to continue would be purely forcing myself for extra content. So that's where we'll wrap up this first impressions with some pros and cons. Pros. The dungeons have massively improved since the last time I played the game. They feel more random, have more interesting mechanics, feel less repetitive and the loot feels more rewarding. I began enjoying the dungeons when I started taking the clear and loot everything approach, rather than doing just enough to get maximum chest rewards at the end then rushing the boss. Visually, the game has quite a nice vibrant art style that I think will be popular with a lot of people. The movement feels quite smooth and responsive. I like the way mob attacks are clearly displayed with the purple icon, so you know exactly when you should use your iframe dodge. The business model seems kind of okay for free to play standards, and it's cool that the game has an apartment that you can collect furniture for and decorate, which is kind of unexpected for this type of game. Cons. The loading screens are so long and so frequent that it constantly takes you out of any kind of flow state you're in whilst playing the game. The sense of progression feels unsatisfying, upgrades aren't impactful, and there's no visual progression outside of buying cash shop costumes. The combat, whilst not bad, is average at best and doesn't get massively better other than a few passives and higher numbers past level 9. The game's UI looks like it was designed for mobile. You can't customise your character's appearance in this game other than what they're wearing. If you like a character's abilities, but not how they look, then you just have to accept playing a character that you don't like the visuals of. And microtransaction currency is priced in a predatory way. It costs 1150 rune silver to buy the weapons. However, you can only buy 1100 rune silver at once, so to buy a weapon you need to buy the next pack up, which will cost you double the money. Sounds like the kind of thing Activision Blizzard or EA would do. Overall, Wayfind had an embarrassingly bad early access launch with its server issues, but I chose not to include that in the cons as I'm assuming that this will be resolved eventually. 
Ignoring the launch though, I just find the game to be so painfully average that I'm surprised so many people are willing to sit in a queue to play it. I don't know what it is about this game, but I just don't get the appeal. I don't know why I'm leveling up my character when the gameplay hardly improves and unlocking new dungeons isn't all that exciting since they all feel the same but with different skins and themes. I don't know when the game's supposed to start being fun because the entirety of the time I've played Wayfinder, my fun levels out of 10 haven't gone above a 5. If I was to chart the amount of fun I've experienced so far playing Wayfinder, it'd look something like this. Realistically, if I wasn't making this video, I'd have quit out of boredom after two hours. I persisted as long as I could, but at this point, if given the chance to sit in the corner and meditate, or play Wayfinder, I'd be choosing the corner. I guess I just don't see the point in making a game if it's not vastly better than everything else on the market, which Wayfinder isn't. Perhaps one day Wayfinder can be a solid 6 out of 10, but only if they improve the progression and shorten the loading screens though. But that's it for this video, let me know your thoughts on Wayfinder in the comments below. Do you think this game will eventually be good? When does the game actually become fun in your opinion? Help us out with a like to appease the algorithm gods, social media on screen. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.